Coach Graham, uh, man, I am uh, honored that we can finally get to do this. We've been talking about this book and about this project and now finally uh, putting it on video here for the first time, I guess after about a three-year discussion of talking about whole person development, hadn't we? Yes, sir. And I'm honored to be here. Well, man. And a lot of things has happened. A lot of things has happened because of the guy that's talking, Rick Buck. Oh. Uh, well, we, uh, just so that people know, uh, you know, so I coached for about 30 years and you coached for about 30 years. And, uh, and it probably, Sam, was 15 years ago at least. Mm -hmm. uh, a mutual friend of ours uh, introduced us at an American Football Coaches Association conference, AFCA, mm -hmm. and we met for the first time at an AFCA and uh, American Football Coaches Association coaching clinic. Mm -hmm. You were uh, you were at a high school uh, down in Alabama, and I think I was at University of the South wow. Swanee, a Division three school at that time. Sure. And one time we, uh, one time we sat together, you know, to have the all sports banquet on the panhandle of Florida. That's right. Yeah. We went down and, there. Yes. And we yeah. had a meal not long after we had met, it seems like. Yeah. And we, we just hit it off for sure. Cause we was around each other a long time. Absolutely. And then, um, then I got a break to go to Division II football at University of West Alabama, sort of down in your stomping grounds of Alabama, where you're from. And I was on that West Alabama D2 staff, and uh, I was actually the defensive coordinator and, um, and the head football coach came in, and um, he said, uh, hey, uh, I was going to hire Sam before I hired you. He, <laughs> he didn't mind about hurting my feelings, which he, did, which he didn't hurt my feelings because I know what kind of man you are. He said, I want to bring Sam back because I think he wants to come here and be the defensive coordinator. So you and I were on the same staff at West Alabama down in old Livingston, Alabama for a minute. Yes, sir. And what, what they went from on defense is very organized, very proper. A very probably unorganized and a slow talking oh. Sand Mountain dude. <laughs> <No. laughs> so we were on that staff together for a minute, and and uh, uh, and then I I went back up to Tennessee and did some more coaching. But we stayed and we stayed in touch. And uh, I'll tell you, men, uh, as you listen to this, I I got hurt in a bad car wreck uh, going on about. I don't know, 15 years ago or something, right right after Sam and I had met, right after the West Alabama days when we were together in about 2005, 2006, I got hurt in a car wreck. Right. And uh, I was banged up pretty bad, and I was up flat on my back, and I got a phone call one day, um, and and it was my buddy Sam Graham here. And, uh, you know, you know, Sam, the thing about men, we don't, we're not very transparent. We hide behind a, a tough mask and we That's hide right. sometime, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you just got on that phone that day and I was hurting brother. Uh, I mean, I was physically hurting because I didn't know if I'd ever get up and walk again. And you go, I want to pray for you. And then, and then you sang a hymn to me. I've never had another man sing to me on the phone and it, and it, it sounds funny, but it wasn't funny brother. Cause it was a, it was a teary scene and I'll never forget that. Well, God bless you. And I, I, I remember it. And I, after we had done this book, uh, I was laying in the bed one night, not long after I should have called you. The name of that hymn was Don't Be Afraid When the Darkness Closes. Mm. The Master is near. He calms every storm. I can't say it exactly right. I'd mess it up. But uh, he's always near, that's for sure. Absolutely. So, you know, Sam, y'all met, Sam made his bones at that uh, one winning the only college football program uh, in NCAA uh, history at that time. Mm -hmm. I know Mount Union's probably done it, but only Division II team to ever go three in a row mm -hmm. 
national championships. And uh, he was on that team. They won three national championships at the Division II level. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And then Sam made his bones coaching there at, at North Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, up there in Northern Alabama. And then um, he uh, uh, was uh, in different high schools and been around some great people as a defensive coordinator, both at the high school and college level. So he was a premier Southern high school college defensive coordinator. And I remember the day about three, four years ago, again, a, a mutual buddy of ours uh, called me and said, uh, Sam ain't coaching no more because uh, he's been stricken with MS and I nearly dropped the phone. And uh, I know you've been struggling with that old joker for a while and it's put you out of coaching. And, but, but the cool thing was you, you called me up and said, Rick, I want to stay in this game. And so what you're looking at right here is Coach Sam Graham staying in this game through whole person development and helping coaches and helping kids with their spiritual life. And is that how the story goes that you remember it, Sam? Yes, sir. Yes. And, and I, I'm honored. I'm honored everything that you have done. You made a phone call to me one day when I felt like, and you felt this way before, because you've been through a lot more than I ever have. But I was sitting here at the house and I had not talked to you, Rick, in a, a few years at that time. And the phone rings, it's Rick Butler. And Rick Butler, through that phone call, the conversation gave my inners, I felt like I was right in the middle of the, the football field coaching again. And it was a blessing. It was a guide thing, I can tell you that. Well, I remember us talking about this book, and this was a, a thousand percent all Sam Graham. All I did was I know a little bit about doing things on Amazon and computers and, uh, and you know, what Sam – developed here is whole person development. So what we're going to do tonight, y'all, is, uh, and as some of my Southern twang comes out, it's because Sam and I get together. I'm out here in California now with all these crazies. I love it out here, but but I'll, I'll let that Southern sneak up on me. But anyway, hopefully, uh, you know, Sam's going to give us some insight on how a football coach uh, in 2019 can, you know, do spiritual life with his football players and his coaches and evoke the name of Jesus Christ in his football program. And we're talking about public schools. And, uh, and so I'm real interested in hear some of your thoughts and some more about the inspiration of the book and, and things of that, Sam, um, you know, guys like Todd Bates, defensive line coach at Clemson, that's Sam and his family with Todd, before a recent game down there at Clemson, but you've been around some big war daddies in the football, you know, Jeremy Pruitt up at University of Tennessee, Todd there at Clemson that you actually coached with, coached for, and people that were under you, like you, Todd there, now the D-line coach, put three guys in the first round of the NFL this year, coached for Sam Graham. So that's the kind of man Sam is. Talk actually, about actually the other day, I didn't mean to butt in. Nope. Actually, the other day, I'm sitting here at home, I'd actually been outside picking green beans. And I, I, I'm i there, the cell phone rings. I look down, it says Bates. John Bates called me and he said, hey, it's fixing to be wide open, coach. You know it is, it's, it's football time. He said, I just wanted to check on you and tell you I love you. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a friend. I don't know, I, I don't know, you know how it is. Coaches, I don't know if there's a bunch of coaches listening. Maybe down the road, like you said, there will be. Uh, I don't know if it's fixing to go into fall camp. and It's a day before camp starts and getting everything ready. I don't know if you swap shoes or whatever reverse roles, if I pick up the phone, call Todd Bates. You know how it goes, Coach. I mean, it's wide open. And that's a true friend, I can tell you that. You know, that's a, that's, you know, that people say, 
when you're not in the coaching profession, you don't remember the wins, you don't remember the losses, you don't remember the championships, you remember the people, you remember the relationships. That's right. And, uh, and like I said, uh, Sam's got a who's who of people that have endorsed this book and, and Todd uh, being one of the main guys, it's really cool. He's a world-class football coach, but I, I don't know him, you know him, but I, from what you tell me, he's a better friend and a better man. Cause oh, just, man. He's a great football coach, but he's a better person than he is a football coach. Yeah, and I think that's probably secret sauce down there at Clemson. Now, here's a man just called you the other day, say, I love you. And they're yeah. fixing to get it, buddy. So yeah. wow. uh, that's huge, man. Uh, you know, I got a I got a practical question. So you've been you've you've made all your bones in public schools. Uh, right. Private schools are different. They're a little bit more wide open to Christian faith mm -hmm. and and right. speaking about Jesus and evoking the name of Jesus Christ. But uh, I'm in a public school. I'm a football coach. I'm a teacher. I'm going to sit down with the boys and maybe a small group or I, I don't know, but how do I share my, my faith in a public school setting? Yes. And, and talking about the book, whole person development, as it goes through the slides and stuff, maybe others I'm sure can see the slides, but through, and I'll talk more about that later, but uh, the uh, four sides and it shows it on this slide that you have wrote up the four sides and I'll talk about them later. And really I, I jumped in the middle of this because of Ed Jones and Ken Carter at Liberty University. I was there on a job interview and that was the first time. Now I say things, I think I say things different than most people it seems like the way I talk, but they introduced me to that because they were using that in their athletics program. This right here, through this, there's four sides, uh, I'm sorry, a spiritual side, a social side, an academic side, and an athletic side. And through the book, if you've read that book or whatever, it talks about when it, those represent quarters. Just like in a football game, you want to win all four quarters. You want to win those quarters. And uh, use the example the way I learned it and, and, and evolved in the quarters with my brother Rick Butler is keep your tires pumped up. And it is our job as coaches to keep our tires pumped up. One thing, Rick, I'd like to say right to the beginning, because you really said that. How do you do that? Uh, one of those quarters of a kid, uh, there's four sides that kid's made up of, and it's those four sides. That's what they're going through right now, the players you coach. The spiritual side, there's one word that held Jesus to the cross, and it was love. You get connected to that. Love can't help but pour out of you. But here's what I say. It's not what your mouth does. what your feet does if you live it coach or whoever's listening and this could be to anybody if you live it and your feet does the work and you live that in front of people you don't have to run your mouth a whole lot they may come to you and say coach what what's what's so different about you but I'll be honest with you, Rick, and other coaches, whoever, uh, I think it's vitally important, and I will talk about that later, it's vitally important to us as a coach is to let players know that we're for real. We're screwed up just like they are. We're sinners, we're wrong. You know what I mean, we're human. A coach, uh, let, they're going to make mistakes. We need to let them know, hey, we're going to make mistakes. When it's fourth and one, the ball's on the one, and we're on defense, and my linebackers never move, and they're five yards deep in the end zone, do you think when they come to the sideline, I'm going to preach them a Sunday school lesson? 
No, I'm going to be going nuts. And we're human, we're messed up. I may say something real crazy to that individual. You know what I mean? But I think when, like, and we'll talk about it later, but I think it's all about your walk, not about your talk. The kids, it's not about your talk. You got to walk, and you got to walk, and you got to walk the truth, and there's only one truth, and it's from above. Absolutely. Um, one thing, Rick, I'd like to talk about real quick to coaches. On that cover, the very first page of that book that you seen a while ago, there is a football player. That football player uh, looks a little bit odd. And, hey, I wanted him to look odd. I think it's great. And the reason I think it's great and the reason I wanted it on the cover is because – he don't look like Bo Jackson. He don't look like you could name any superstar player, NFL player, whatever. He looks like probably he couldn't play a down somewhat. I asked you, Coach, do you just coach the Bo Jackson? Or do you coach every sucker in that lockers, in those lockers? You're responsible for them all. No, and I've been guilty of it. Oh, I'm just going to coach that dude and run a 4-4. Four, four. He can get the – It's a, he's quick six. He's going to get it in the end zone fast. Or he can – hey, he can cover anybody they put out there on defense. And I, I have, as a young coach especially, been guilty of it. I'm going to hug up on that dude. I'm going to ride his coattail. That dude's so fast, I think he'll go to the University of wherever. He'll probably play in the NFL. Maybe they'll hire me as a coach. Uh-uh. That's not what we're there for. It's about taking care of every kid in the program. One more thing. That football player has a protruding something in his chest. Well, what that says to me it's not all about the outside anyway. It's about the heart. It's about the kids inside. If you read the good book, the creator of the universe don't look at the outer appearance. He looks at the heart. That's what it says in God's word. So it's true. And uh, I just wanted to touch base on that. And I didn't mean to want to go back. But I think that's very important. Um, and I, I'm going to move you here to uh, the Adrian Rogers quote that uh, okay. you told me many times, and mm -hmm. and and this is sort of getting into the really the guts of the book, and and just more where your heart is, and right. and and I do and I do want to say this. I don't want to miss it. I may forget it. As you get into this Adrian Rogers quote in this sentence, we need coaches who will stand for the truth. Um, in the last, just up here where I am, just at, just the next town over, Gilroy, California, and that you know they had three people get killed uh, in Waco, not Waco, but. Um, um, oh, El Paso, Texas, um, Dayton, Ohio. I mean, Sam, in the last four days, we've had some tragedies go on. Yeah. And, and it's young people are messed up. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are messed up. And, and we need coaches more than ever. I just wanted to okay. – you know, that's sort of a uh, – it's a defining moment for leaders. But right. I, I think that segues into this perfectly. Go ahead. One thing, one thing, and, and just uh, what Rick was talking about is in my heart, in my mind, although people in this land would disagree maybe, but they probably never put that war bonnet on, as I call it. They never put the headgear on. But the game of football, one, it's the greatest team sport ever invented, no doubt, bar none. I've seen young man, men get so passionate over the great game of football. I've seen grown men 
I'm talking about men, six, four, 300 pound, whatever. They'll be sitting in a locker, in a football locker room, and they'll just start tears running down their cheeks. I can't explain it other than the passion that kids, young men, have for this great game. And young men, as well, you know, coach, this game creates a saw log for a backbone. Because what you do, it's a year-round deal. you got to be committed. It prepares kids to, hey, when they get older, doggone, hey, get your behind up and go to work. Go to work, feed your family, feed your kids. It's, oh, I'm just going to take the day off. No, you take a bunch of days off, you'll be fired. We need men, just like Wiz talking about, with a saw log for a backbone. Rick talked about people, just some awful, awful, I can't even imagine things that went on the last couple of days. Awful, terrible things that's going on in this land. This land needs young men. If men were the men they ought to be, and like I said, had the backbone they should have, this land would change with the vertical on our side. What creates a backbone? My opinion, my opinion, this great game creates it more than anything we have going in society today. I, there's a statement up at top, Adrian Rogers, can't purify water by painting the pump. Well, it don't take a rocket, rocket scientist to figure out what that's saying to you. It's not about the outside. It goes back. It's not about the outside anyway. It's about what's on the inside. Coach, how do you live in your daily life? Are you winning the quarters of your life? And we'll talk about that in a minute. Or are they lacking? Or really, are you getting your butt kicked? Is the opponent whipping you? And our opponent in this life is... Uh, real and it's the devil himself and it's a much bigger opponent than what you face in a football game i can promise you that uh in today's world and we need coaches it goes along with the you can't purify water by painting the pump we need coaches who will stand for the truth the truth and there's only one truth there's not a bunch of, this world will offer a bunch of horse manure. That's the only way I know how to put it. I'm a country boy. That's the only way I know how to put it. But there's only one. There's only one truth. And we need leaders, and we need to develop leaders in this country. We need to develop young men, coaches. Young men. Do you want your grandchildren? Do you want, if you have young children, you're a coach? Do you want them to grow up in some of the things that's going on right now? How's it going to change? The first thing's a miracle from up above. God gave us, God made us free moral agents. We're free to choose. Okay? We can choose to live like hell if we want to when we get up in the morning. Or we can choose to walk the walk and stand for the truth. If you stand for the truth in coaching, it's going to rub off on your kid. I know when my coaches coached me, I knew exactly. I didn't know exactly how they lived away from football, but I knew exactly if they stood for the truth or if they stood and they walked a crooked line. They didn't walk a straight line. I knew that. But I always, if my coaches 100% of the time was walking a like a drunk driver running walk, or driving down the road. I wanted, you want to, when you're a player, y'all know what I'm talking about, you want to please your doggone coach. If you don't, you're not going to be there very long. So what that coach did on a daily basis, if he didn't walk a straight and narrow, not perfect, we said that a while ago, we're messed up just like they are, all of us. Their parents are. Their grandparents are. We're all messed up. 
Listen, if we will walk a straight and narrow way, those coaches, it'll rub off on those kids. And one day, when you do have kids, or you probably do, or grandkids, when your grandkids grow up, you'll be going, golly, I'm glad we got some men with some backbone and stuff changing a little bit around here. In the game of football, in the game of football, uh, we give all of our players, like at the beginning of the year, we give them a playbook, and they must study the playbook, and they must sustain the pace. Hey, we give them a playbook, and those plays, there's not a play drew up or a defense drew up anything kicking game the three phases of football game drew up to lose you drop to score or defend the score so you can win or, or set up something in a kicking game to win you don't set up to lose well you give them the playbook hey and they need the stp sustain the pace and win win the football game well as it goes with the coaches, with coaches, we also have a playbook, not just coaches, everybody on earth, coaches, players, any human. Hey, you have a playbook too. And it's the master playbook. And the only truth you can stand on, and there's only one truth, and it's God talking to us, is the Bible. We must study that playbook just as your players have an opponent every Friday night or every Saturday afternoon or night, whatever it be. You have an opponent they have to go against daily and a much bigger opponent in this life. And it's a lot tougher than the doggone toughest team you've ever played in your life. It's triple tougher. And it'll hit you right in the nose it's tough, but you know what you have to do? You have to break open that master playbook, the Bible, and you have to read it. That's your directions for life on how to win. Coaches, man, there's not a coach I've ever met. They didn't stay in coaching long if they like this. There's no coach ever. The word lose is out. That Nobody wants no part of that. So, if you don't want no part of it, losing, I don't want no part of it. We got to break the bread of life, the Bible. We got to memorize scripture. That's God talking to us how to win in this life. We all want to win. The opponent, your football players play, mm, yeah, there'll be some tough ones. It'll go like a roller coaster up and down sometimes. But in this game, it just keeps on keeping on. In John 10.10, 10, it says that opponent comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm, that's a much, much bigger opponent than some football game. You're coaching against somebody or whatever. This life, you must keep your eyes on the vertical and try to stay in his word. Stay around brothers that are happy. Because we're all messed up. We're going to screw up. We're going to do stupid things because we're human. But the more you're in his word, the more you hear his word from other people, the more you're in prayer. Prayer is a free line. You can pray to Almighty God anytime you want to. I prayed a bunch of times when it was fourth and one. We had to stop them. And we didn't always do it. I'm going to ask God when I get to heaven why we didn't stop them because I prayed hard. But I am just messing there. But you you got to keep on keeping on, man, striving to be the very best you can be. Whole person development, whole person development, like I said a while ago, it's four sides to each kid you coach. And we've listed in that book, it represents four quarters. Man, you got to win all four quarters in your life. And I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, in a football game, you would never go out there and tell your kids, uh, we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna drink sweet tea during the first quarter. 
we're just going, we're not going to go out there. Uh-uh. No, you could do that, but you probably wouldn't have a job very long. No, that wouldn't happen. When life, you could choose to do that, but in life, you play it every day you breathe. Every day. And it is a war going on. In that whole person development, again, I said it's broke into four segments. And there is, in those segments, it is our four sides to each kid you coach. There's a spiritual side, a social side, an academic side, and an athletic side. Uh, us as coaches, you as a coach, it's up to us to help them win all four sides to their life. Just like a coach, you have a game day itinerary, and you got boom, boom, boom. You know it's organized up until 7 o'clock or whatever the kickoff is. Well, it's the same way in this whole person development. Coaches, coaches need to have their tire pump to win their four quarters of their life. It may not be, oh, it's different for a coach because you're not right in the middle, but you're in the middle of different things. But in the first quarter and the spiritual, that's all the same. The second quarter, the social, the social, that's the same because you deal with people. If you don't deal with people in your job, then I don't know. I mean, I guess there's some people that can stay at home and never do anything on uh, just on the computer maybe. But I, I'd say they would at some point have to deal with other people. And then the third quarter, the academic side, and the fourth quarter, the athletic. Of course, you're right in the middle of the athletic side yourself. But the third quarter, maybe uh, your job, because it's different than those kids. You got to win that quarter of your life and sustain the pace. A guy I coached for as an assistant, but I played for him. I played linebacker for him in college. His name was Bill Hyde, great defensive coordinator. Bill Hyde would always tell us, and he was always, always say to he said it every every Thursday night in college football or Thursday after practice to visualize. Visualize yourself making great plays in the football game Saturday. Visualize your job. See yourself as a linebacker making tackles, making interceptions, scooping and scoring, uh, stripping a fumble. You could keep naming it. To visualize over and over and over. One time, and I've said that same thing because I heard it for Ten and a half years, the same thing, over and over and over on, win on Thursdays. High school, it would be Wednesdays. He would say it two days before kickoff to start visualizing your mind. And I said it, I've said i said it to players before, and I've had it happen to myself, but I've said it to players before. I had a player one time in a high school, and he made a pick six. He sprinted to the sideline. Everybody was going crazy. I grabbed me and he said, Coach, coach. And I could I couldn't really hear what he was saying to begin with. And he grabbed me by the shoulders and he was just his eyes was big around half a dollar. I seen that Wednesday night. I seen that when I laid down to go to sleep Wednesday night. In my mind, I seen myself doing that. Visualize, visualize. I teaching your players to visualize, but but you as a coach. Visualize. Visualize yourself being successful and, and, and winning the four quarters of your life. And if you walk that straight and narrow, then you rub off your team for sure. So the uh, in whole person development, the itinerary, we have a warm-ups preparing for kickoff, uh, coin toss, first quarter, second quarter, halftime. Halftime, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Uh, in the third quarter, of course, the spiritual side, the spirit, uh, social side, in the second quarter, the third quarter, the academic persons in the fourth quarter, and then post-game analysis. When we go, uh, when we go to this next slide, Coach, I want to help you. How, how do you do this exactly? You know what I'm saying? First, 
and, and we have in the warm-ups just just like anything just before a football game warm-ups before uh jumping both feet right into whole person development and it says right here and as you read it coaches can do two things they can build a young man or the and number two or they can build a resume what i say and i've heard a coach say and i think and i think it was my own dad said to me coaches can do thing two things they can build a young man or they can build a resume if you take care of the first one and you build the young men you coach and the young men that stand for the truth your resume it'll take care of itself for sure and uh coach if you that's the bottom line to me is if you build young men and you tap into their inners as i say then the outers it'll take care of itself if you hey if you if you tap into their inners and a kid knows you care about them and you love them it goes about that word love if you truly love them that kid you can coach the wax out of it you can run him till he sells buicks you can do whatever you want to just about it and that kid would find a circle saw for you i promise you at any time coaches and, and this statement was said and i think it was my dad again always remember without players there wouldn't be a title called coach i'm gonna say that again always remember without players you wouldn't even exist if those young men didn't go out there and do what you was asking them to do your job wouldn't exist so it's up to us to pour our life into young men and and there's a question it asks right at the bottom coach what kind of coach are you do you prepare your kids do you develop the whole person of that young man do you try to help him win in all four quarters of their life uh or do you take the air out of their tires or do you help the opponent win the opponent is us not helping those kids keep their tires pumping and win that quarter and uh if you, you rick if you'll go to that next slide the next slide this right here in the coin toss and, and i'll just go over this right quick ed gomes there at liberty liberty he it says on that slide to use whole person development just like uh, a person uses a mirror uh in this whole person of Luke 252 Luke 252 says Jesus grew in wisdom and stature if the creator of the universe grew in wisdom and stature, I think it's important for us and the kids we coach to grow in wisdom and stature we ought to pour our life into them football knowledge but bigger than that life knowledge how to win that quarter of their life life knowledge and win uh, like i said in that quarter of your life whole person development not bringing it for four quarters equals an unbalanced life life that has four quarters is a balanced life i always right here I always talk in a first team meeting. I always talk to the kids about whole person development. If a kid ever has a problem, and they do in their life, when they come to me, I go to one of these four sides of their life, and that's their problem. They're losing in that quarter of their life. I will ask them questions. And, and, and Rick, I do have in the book, a list of questions just as a of course you could ask them a lot of things you could come up with better questions than I ever put in there but uh, I got a lot of those questions from Ed Gomes years ago 
because uh, it's about the same for any coach, a list of questions to ask the kid when he comes to your office and he has a problem or whatever it be, or what's going on in his life. And you'll pinpoint one of those sides of his life. That's the kid's deal. I promise you, no doubt about it. And I, I want to talk real quick and explain the uh, different sides of your life. And I really want to talk about the spiritual side, the spiritual side, because I know, and Rick said a while ago, how do we, how do we apply this in a public school system? I worked in a public school system about, I think it was 21 years before uh, I, I had to take a leave or whatever. In the spiritual side of your life, how do I do that with a bunch of kids around that setting? It goes back, Coach, to you walking the walk. If you walk the walk in front of your kids, it's not going to be you going to the kid and say, hey, what's going on here? And you, hey, you're, hey, I'm Sam Graham. I'm not Billy Graham. I said that to a million kids. And you're preaching at them. You're trying to correct them. No, they'll ask you, Coach, why, why, why are you so different? Why are you different? Man, yeah, you have crazy times, of course, because you've chewed me out more than once. And it sure wasn't a Sunday school lesson. But what's different about you? Then you can talk to the kid about the spiritual side of their life. But here's what I do in a team meeting. The spiritual side of the life I asked a question in a team meeting. Men, what do you think of when you think spiritual? When you think spiritual, what do you think of? Well, there'll be kids raise their hand. They'll say all kind of different answers. Some will say, uh, go to church, read the Bible, whatever. All right? Well, yeah. And I say, yes. And I'll ask the question, how many times have you done that lately in your life? They say, well, I did that one time when you, uh, y'all fed us at church. Y'all fed us a squad Sunday or whatever, and you fed us steaks. I done it one time. Well, in that quarter of the life, one time in the last two months, well, you're not winning that side of your life and the spiritual side of your life. And it, it, I, I, hey, it's up to us to live it in front of those kids. And those kids will come to us instead of you having to come to them. Then when they come to you, buddy, you can tell it. But that's just the way it is. You got to live it. It's not what your feet do, it's not what your mouth says. In the spiritual side of your life, and I say this to those young men. In the spiritual side of your life, listen, you have to make wise biblical choices. It's on that PowerPoint right there, slide, I'm sorry. Wise biblical choices in your life. That's the only truth, again, you can stand on. Wise biblical choices will turn into wise biblical habits. And wise biblical habits, and you start making wise biblical habits, it will turn into great biblical character in the spiritual side of your life. If you stick your nose mm -hmm. in the book, Facebook, people talk about Facebook, you stick your nose in the book, you will get connected because that's Almighty God talking to us. If we and and I hope that made sense to you about kids, if they will make wise, wise biblical choices in their life, they'll turn into good habits, and then good habits will turn into great character in that side of the life. You can't help but win if you got great character in that side of your life, in the spiritual side of your life. In the social side, that second quarter is the social side of your life. The social, well, the social, when you say that word, that's people interacting with others. Well, in the social side of your life, how do you treat people around you? 
Did you, the biggest thing to me, did you treat them with respect? One, then the first and foremost thing is coach, if you treat people around you, co-workers, your assistant coaches, you may be assistant coach. If you treat them with respect and those kids see that, they have maybe, maybe a rub off on them, they'll respect others. How do they respect? I asked them just like that in the team meeting. What do you think of when you think social side of your life? They'll say friends. And I always say, yeah. And there's a second verse. Go ahead and say it. And they'll say girlfriends. I said, yeah, girlfriends. And it boils back to respect. In the social side of your life, how do you treat your teachers? Teacher, hey, do you treat them with respect? Do you treat your parents with respect? Mm -hmm. you got to win in the social side of your life. And the word is respect. If you treat them with respect, you're going to win in the social side of your life. we we'll move on to the next slide. The third quarter is the academic side of the life. Well, that kid uh, that you coach, and it goes back again, that's mental choices. If they make great mental choices in that side of their life, okay, it'll turn into good habits in the academic side of their life. Good habits will turn into great character in that side of the life. And they're, hey, they will be winning in that quarter in their life. You won't have a bunch of teachers rapping at you and stuff if that kid, if his tires pumped up in the academic side of his life, if he's winning that quarter, as we say in the book, if he is, you're not going to have a bunch of troubles. Uh, oh, Miss So and so wants to see you, that's some math teacher or whatever down the road. They, hey, we need to teach them the importance that they're there for a degree. They're not there just, oh, we can just play football. It's not very important. No, this is your life, man. This is very important. You got to win that quarter of your life and just make wise, wise academic choices and turn into good habits and great character in that side of your life. In the athletic side, athletic side, that boils down to physical choices. Physical choices in the athletic side of your life. Hey, if you make, and coaches you know better than I know, but I'm going to say what I would say to a young man in some kind of meeting. That side of your life, this is one of the four, four sides to your life you're going through right now. My goal is to help you win in all four of those sides of your life. In the athletic side, if you'll notice back on the first PowerPoint, Rick, I, I did not say this, and you don't have to go back, but if you'll notice here all these four that we're talking about, the scoreboards zero to zero, goose egg to goose egg. When that first started with the whole person development in those scoreboards, if you would have noticed the spiritual side, the home, we was seven, the guest was 35. In the social side, the home again, that's us. We was 14, the guest 21. Down here in the social side, the home, we're three. The guest is 42. When we get the athletic side, hey, that young man's 49 and the opponent's goose egg. A lot of times that happens in a young man's life. It's all about the athletic. No, that kid, hey, that's what he's going through in his life. Why would we just pour our life into, oh, it's athletic. I'm not talking about, not, hey, you bust their butt to win football games. That's what you're hired for. Yes, but if you want your kid to come to practice every day and he don't have that far away look in his eye, like he don't want to be there and stuff, because sometimes when that happens, you've got to get to the core root of the problem. 
That's where meeting individually with a young man, asked him about how's things going the spiritual side of your life, the uh, social side of your life, the academic side of your life, the athletic side of your life. It's up to us to help them win in the scoreboard and that side of your life. In the athletic side of your life, you got to make wise physical choices. You got to bust your butt, man, if you're going to play football here. We all know that. Man, you got to drag your hemorrhoids on the ground, the squat rack. You got to do, hey, what I say, or I did say to players, you got to hurt to heal, man. You got to hurt to heal. There's merit to that because you're going to make them hurt a whole lot. But you know, ultimately, it's for their good. They don't realize it at the time, but it is. The athletic side of your life, son, hey, player, if you'll make wise physical choices in the athletic side of your life, it'll turn into good physical habits. And those good physical habits will turn in gra into great character in the athletic side of your life, just like the other side. This right here, this, this little thing at the end, and I'm very sorry, poem, football coaches charge. I'm not going to talk long, Rick, about this. Uh, my mother helped me do this. She made it look right. You can tell by the way I talk, I wouldn't have made it look right. But this co coaches charge, talks about if Jesus came to your field house. Really, that's about enough said. I know if I was during the fall or the spring or any time of year, if Jesus came in the field house, sometimes I'd, ugh, I'd want him to leave. I wouldn't want him there. This right here, if you read through that, and you can, you can read, or you wouldn't be coaching. It asked in that, what if Jesus asked about your family? Well, let me ask you, Coach, if Jesus asked about your family, and it talks about, was you there when your son scored his first touchdown in the Pee Wee ball game? You can read. I didn't say that exactly the way it is. Or was you there when your daughter was in a talent show and she won the talent show and you didn't even know it because we were so focused on the one thing. The one thing being, hey, we got to win the ball game Friday night. I don't care about my family. We just got to win. Well, you do got to. You, you want to win. You do care about your family because you're trying to bust your behind to do your job the best you can to feed your family. But there are certain things and you know it. Sometimes I've been around, and I've been guilty of that. Hey, leave, hey we're going to stay in the field house all night tonight because the superintendent I know comes by here about every Monday night. Well, that's wrong. Man, do your job. Do the best you can do, but when it's done, it's done. Go home, hug your wife and kids. And at least be in there tell them good night maybe some nights, maybe later in the week because I know early in the week it's a busy, busy time. But make wise choices when it comes to that. This right here, I'm going to say this. 1 Corinthians 10.31, it talks about whatever you do, whether you coach football, whether you own a convenience store, I'm just making up stuff. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever job it is you do, do it all to glorify God. God, our creator. I have something, our players use this at West Alabama, and our players use this when I was at other school. They would have the little bracelets and they said G3. What that stood for is giving God glory. And they had a sign. I can't make that sign, but instead of making some whatever sign, they would make a sign G3. Well, G3 meant giving God the glory because I couldn't have made that pick. I couldn't have made that touchdown. I couldn't have made, I couldn't even breathe if it wasn't for Almighty God. So Almighty God is in control and he's in control of all things. I want to leave you with this. It was clear on the 
It's what our feet does, not what our mouth runs all the time. You're yep. hired to be a football coach. You didn't yep. hire to be the Baptist preacher. You know what I mean? You uh, and, and it goes back, and I know we've said this a bunch of times, but I've heard the statement. I don't know who exactly said that, but uh, your walk, not your mouth. I know what the Bible says in the book of James, to be swift to hear and slow to speak. But I've heard it said that you may, you may be the only Bible a person ever reads. Well, to me, it's how you walk, you walk. Anybody that even, even sees a recording, um, you know, you, you can buy Sam's book on Amazon. Just, uh, you know, just search Sam Graham, Whole Person Development. Mm -hmm. And the book's on Kindle, the book's on paperback. But uh, this little uh, PDF, uh, I can email it to you. So if anybody hits me up at info, I-N-F-O, at surface to air system, info at surface to air system, I'll send that to you. And, uh, and if you want to get in touch with Coach Graham, and uh, a good place to get him is on Twitter. He's come into the 21st century now. Huh, that's uh, amazing. At FB Coaches Charge, at, yeah. at sign, that's Twitter, you know. FB, standing for football, Coaches, that's C-O-A-C-H-E-S, Charge, at Football Coaches Charge. Y'all could DM him there, but uh, if you want, um, if you want the coach's charge right here, the football coach's charge poem, put it up in your locker room, team room, weight room, office, whatever. I'll I'll send that to you if you hit me up. Info at surface to air system dot com. Um, and uh, I love you, man. Love you, man. And uh, that's something. Uh, uh, it don't matter if, if me and Sam talk four times a day or don't talk in four years. Uh, I know if I call in four years from now, we'll hang up the phone. And before we hang up, he'll say, I love you. And he means it from the bottom of his socks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so that's a, you know, that's just that, that's just kind of guy you are coach. I appreciate you, man. God bless you, man. God bless you. I'll give you a call here a little bit later. Okay. Over and out. All right. See you brother. Bye.